Welcome everyone to this week's edition of Hashtag Toe to Toe. I'm Andy Clark and joining me this week is Leon McKenzie and we are in the Peacock Gym in Canning Town, East London. This is one of the gyms in the capital. Uh, fighters, all sorts of fighters, all shapes, sizes, different levels of ability come through here all of the time. Uh, and it's a place that you're, you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, today's a uh, probably a bit more of a comfortable outing here for you than it has been in the past because you used to come down here and, and spar out in the yard. That's right, so I'm really pleased to be uh, sitting here right now because <laughs> the times that I sparred with Anthony were an experience in itself. Um, fantastic talent and I had some, uh, some, well, done a lot of sparring here. Not just against Anthony, but we've done a lot of sparring and I learned, I, I used to go over here sparring myself. You know, my dad wasn't with me most of the time. So it was, uh, you know what, really, uh, put the gloves on and you're alone sort of thing. So it was good. It was really, really good for the, the progress in, in, in boxing. It's, it's that kind of a place, isn't it? Because you walk in here, it's busy. Uh, there's people doing all sorts. Every inch of space is being used and everybody just has to rub along together. There's no kind of pecking order. You know, people will just look at you. Classic boxing gym scenario and just think, OK, let's see what you've got. Yeah, it's all lies on you. Um, you come here, um, I learned to fight. Uh, in many places, not just my own gym, but you know, when you come to places like here and you've got talents like Anthony sort of kind of going through the motions with you inspiring but doing a bit of damage, um, it really does uh, open up your eyes to a lot. But again, there's, there's a lot of um, pedigree here. Well, we've got plenty of questions for you. Um, you've had such an interesting career, Premier League footballer, super middleweight contender, filmmaker, boxing coach, trainer <laughs> these days, all sorts, all sorts. And we saw you at the weekend, we saw yep. you at the weekend up in Liverpool. Uh, this first question from Rory ties into that. Who's in your stable at the minute and have you got any future stars? Really good performance from, from Philip Bowes uh, on Saturday. Well, Philip Bowes is the only one I look after in the respect of, um, from a training point of view. Um, I'm alongside Barry Smith. I've come in to alter a few things, um, concentrate on the fitness side of it and um, help development um, the, with the technique and stuff in respect of, you know, Barry um, does more of what he does and um, I do what I do. He is um, really come on, really come on. And that's not just because I've come into the uh, equation. He's just um, at a stage now where he, he believes in himself and you can see the performance on Saturday it was a fantastic boxing display. And um, yeah, he's, he's really, I'm looking forward to, to what's next. What's interesting with him, I think, is that when you look at him and you realise he's 34, it kind of, it makes you kind of rub your eyes a bit because he looks really mm. fresh mm. Um, and he's got that really good kind of southpaw technique where he's going to be a problem for, for anybody, really. So mm. I think, you know, there, there is a chance he could come up on the rail in that division and, and you know, move further than that. Yeah, title. Phil's IQ is, is fantastic. You know, even when, even when we're doing pads together, his mind is is so like up there to the point of like he's always like thinking ahead, and he will say to me, "Oh, but Lee, like, let me just let me just try this and da da da." And we're always working on things all the time. His IQ is unbelievable. So um, yeah, he's uh, definitely a although it's, it's it's a little bit late on. And so you can see that you know the miles are still on the clock. He's he's very he's very capable. Well, talking of boxing IQs, this one's from Charles, uh, and he wants to know if you could coach any up and coming boxer, who would it be and why? If I Tough could question. Coach, ooh, if I could coach any up and coming boxer, who would it be and why? I think if anyone that stands out for me, being that I've had the experience in sharing the ring with him. Um, I feel like Anthony Yard, with the talent that he has, and most haven't really seen the, the levels really, um, I would say it would have to be him in the respect of what he, what he brings, what I've seen. Um, that, that's, that's interesting, I think that's really interesting because there's a lot of scrutiny on Anthony Yard because he's now mandatory for Kovalev and because people keep saying, well, he hasn't fought anyone. Mm. How can you say he's this and how can you say he's that? Mm. And the only people who do know mm. are the people who are with him every day and the people who've been in with him. And you're, you're one of them. You're one of the kind of in crowd on this one. And there aren't that many of you. No, I mean, and this, you know what? You're, you're never going to please everyone. Um, everyone wants to see results. Anthony, um, if you look at it on paper, he's still fighting people that, are still relevant and still have very good records but 
again, everyone wants to see uh, the results in respect of the, the big, big fights. Um, and, you know, as they always say, it's, it's all about timing and they, they want to bring him through how they want to bring him through. I just know that Anthony is a special talent and you can only identify that when, when obviously I was sharing the ring with him and actually observing properly. Um, I would like to think my boxing IQ is, is pretty up there in, in what I'm seeing anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I look forward to him getting the, the big fights and, and, uh, and us really seeing Whatever, you know, that's pro you know, proving to people and, and certain people that doubt wrong. OK, well, just one more on him, because we do have a question from Des, and it's a question that people are putting all the time now, and we'll get an answer at some point. Who wins Yarda Boazzi? Boazzi is a, another fantastic talent and fighter. Um, and actually, funny enough, we've done a couple of rounds with him uh, this side of, of, of my age, uh, not so long ago, helping... Uh, Dwayne Sinclair, he's a you know conducts himself properly. He's a proper professional, very spiteful and accurate in his punching, um, very just very very gifted as well. I feel going going with the two. My my honest opinion, um, I feel that Anthony just tips this for me, just in the respect of um, I think he'll be able to find Barazzi more so. And um, Anthony's not hard, um, not easy to hit, shall I say? So uh, I just, it's interesting. It's, it's a hard one to, to actually really pick because I think they're both fantastic talents. But if I was to put my money on it, I, I reckon um, Anthony just tip, tips it. Okay, interesting, interesting. We all hope that we'll see that. Mm. I don't think we're going to see it anytime no. particularly soon. And there's no real reason why we should. You know, if they keep progressing as we hope they will, it'll just cook a bit and hopefully become a, an even bigger fight a little bit down the line. Um, so here's a question from Joey. What do you miss most since retiring? Uh, competing. I miss, I miss retiring. I miss um, the whole, you know, whether it's walking out to, to, to have a fight or he's walking out onto a, onto a pitch to prepare to get into a massive game. I miss scoring goals, I miss the, the, the training aspect, the levels of, of what I, I once was. Um, and unfortunately, I just can't really get to those levels anymore, training-wise or whatever. Um, so there's certain elements that I do miss, but very um, very happy to be retired, especially when I train sometimes. <laughs> well, this links up to um, a question from Khan, and it, he wants to know what, what do you find difficult about pre-fight build-up, but I guess we could kind of expand that out to, you know, maybe that's one thing that you don't miss is, is going, I, taking yourself to that place, whether it was football or whether it was, yeah, whether it was I, boxing. I think with, with boxing, um, my last two title fights, you know, we were at the levels of, of someone of my age with no sort of amateur experience, but to come in and, and fight at those levels. Weight was, I, I struggled with the weight a little bit. The last couple just started finding it a little bit hard. Metabolism changes and I was holding on to more, you know, I don't know, but I just got it wrong for the last couple. And that really affected everything. Um, just just the recovery, wasn't recovering the same. Um, whether that be sparring and, and stuff. So I knew we was close to, you know, kind of maybe calling it a day, but 22 years of, 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 of elite levels, of 18 years in football and another four years or so with boxing at a very good level, just think the body was just like, I've had enough. So, yeah, definitely uh, dieting. I don't really miss that. No, I, I can't say I blame you there. Um, a, a lot of boxing in the in the family, of course. And Mark wants to know what advice did did Duke uh, give you, Clinton as well, as well your dad when yeah. you when you turned pro and when you decided to to hang them up. Just uh, just enjoying myself, and um, we've always been I've always been a, a, a very good professional in, in how I've trained and dedicated myself to be the best I could be um, for the short space that I was in boxing. Uh, I just feel like I. You know, and I wasn't sort of on Sky every month and there, no one sort of gave me anything to help me come through regardless of, of my dad and uncle. And I just felt like I, I'd done enough to prove that I could 
mix it with very good fighters and prove that I'm, I can fight myself. And that was, the, in the long run, the most important thing with the uh, time scale that I had, because I didn't have much time being that I jumped in pretty much at 35 years old, so. Well, those two, I'm sure, your uncle and your dad would have been a big inspiration to you. But uh, another question here from Mog, who, who inspires you? Could be football, could be boxing, could be, could be anything. Who inspires me? Yeah. And that, does that have to be within sport? No, not at all. Could be anything. My children. My children inspire me. They give me a purpose um, to keep trying and keep going. And um, just, yeah, just to be the best I can be. Probably, that's, they're, they're the ones that come to my mind. So, a question from Mohim, and it's been well documented. Um, the struggles you've had with, with depression, it's something which people are talking about a lot more now. Mental health is much more to the fore. It's a much healthier debate these days, and you've been instrumental in that, I would say. Uh, and you. you're putting the finishing touches on a, on a pretty impressive um, documentary film, which, mm. which you put together and, and you're bringing out. So, quite a broad question from Mohim, but what's the best way to, to battle depression? Um, yeah, I mean, w with depression, I've always found uh, it to be a bit of a fight in my own life. And I've tried to educate myself the best way possible. And most of that has literally been from speaking and, and doing what I've doing, because I've been doing this for a number of years. So I go all over the UK now and speak, speak about it. And um, for someone that is struggling, is to fi just find it within yourself to try and step forward and, and make the choice to, to try and get the right help, because there's so many avenues now where we can get help. Um, make that phone, phone call, whether it's to a loved one, a friend, and start projecting your feelings in the respect of where you, you are. And, um, that's the first step for healing, just to try and get yourself into a position where you want to help yourself. Because that's, it's very hard to sort of answer that question in, in full detail um, without kind of really breaking everything down. Um, the reasons to why one is suffering, um, because everyone has many, many, many ways and forms of, 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 having, of going through that. So please, um, you know, just try and there's so many things, whether it's my even my own company, Mind Reposition, um, Calm Mind, there's so many charities that do provide help and, and right resources to make those calls. Um, but I say for your first protocol is, is speaking to a loved one. If you don't have that, um, maybe someone that's in a professional manner. So just tell us about the, uh, about the film that you've, that you've made, that you're just finishing off, because I remember uh, last year, uh, I follow you on social media and just looking up one day and just seeing a picture of, of Leon in a room with a rock. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking this is, this is pretty epic. I mean, how, how, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, that's a, again, we have been doing this film, Ten Camp. Um, it's a documentary which is about myself and football, you know, football boxing. And I've incorporated mental health awareness into the documentary, which is me interviewing other athletes, um, so many, just to name a few, like Frank Bruno, Ricky Hatton, Alan Shearer, there's so many athletes that I've interviewed. And um, I actually contacted Dwayne Johnson, who um, literally like two o'clock in the morning, uh, reached back out to me. Um, and I was just like, wow, is this like actually happening? He actually got back to me. So his manager uh, contacted me and said, look, Dwayne's seen your, you know, looked into your story and um, thinks, you, you know, he, he believes in what you're doing. He thinks it's fantastic. He wants to fly over to LA. So basically he flew me and my team over to LA. I went onto the ballers set of where he was filming. And, it's a great, um, great show ballers. I yeah, love yeah, yeah. And uh, that was quite an amazing day in itself. And we, he gave me a good hour and an incredible interview, which obviously being that side, I was um, an interview and a man that is, 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 is just totally the real deal, very giving person. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, when this film arrives, obviously we're in the dis distribution stages at the moment, but I don't have a date of, of to when and how and what, what's, you know, when it's gonna come, but it will be here. 
OK, well, let's just finish off with a few quick-fire mm. questions. So quick on the draw with these. First one from Darrow. Would you rather be a Champions League winner or undisputed middle, uh, super middleweight champion? That's such a hard question for me. It's a hard question. Um, uh, I really couldn't answer it because they're both sort of fantastic in itself. I, if I was going to go, I played 18 years within football, so I would probably go for the first one because I had played so many years in football. So champion, winning a Champions League medal would be uh, quite extraordinary. But boxing, on the other hand, I feel like if I would have started younger, I would have had a def definitely a, a more serious opportunity in maybe winning something major. Well, I'm not sure this one's going to be any easier. This is from Carl. Which feels best, a knockout or scoring a winning goal? Scoring a winning goal. I actually, <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, do you know why? Because when I first made my professional debut in boxing, I actually said, oh my God, this is like the best feeling ever, because that was like my first sort of stoppage. Um, but when I, as time went on and I started to understand boxing more, I was like, no, no, you can't beat scoring goals. Um, and you actually can't. Like, scoring goals is unbelievable. I used to love doing it. You could see the way I scored and celebrated. <laughs> yeah, no, I believe you. I believe you all day long. Uh, so this is from Josh, two-parter. Toughest player you ever faced on the football pitch? Marcel Desai. Um, yeah, yeah Desai. He was, he was uh, a serious guy. Just, just. I remember one time uh, I was playing against Chelsea, and I was, I was at. I was actually at Peterborough at the time, I think, and I, when I was, it, we, we was in a cup tie. And I remember just, uh, I'd done something, I sort of elbowed him or something, and he just sort of grabbed my arm, he was really strong, grabbed my arm and he said, if you do that again, I will break you. <laughs> Mate, I, was, I hid It's all, like a rocky line, I hid, isn't it? I, like hid the rest of the game. Yeah. I hid the rest of the game. Um, and what was the other? What? Well, the second part would be toughest boxer you faced. Toughest boxer I faced. Um, toughest to toughest would be probably Cello, in the respect of just that fight. He just took some <laughs> serious shots. It is an incredible fight that against Cello. He took for the, some for the southern serious area. shots, in, and he just, title. you know what, experience uh, shined through in the end. Um, and I just didn't have enough in me to. I just I was exhausted exhausted because I've given him my all um, and that's why I could retire the next day because I knew that I'd given everything I left everything there so you know it's, it's the way it is it's boxing um, and he went on to win the Southern Area title well I saw him a few weeks ago actually he does some work for uh, for Boxing Futures that's right, yeah, that's right. charity yeah, he's doing, he's doing some good He's, he's, he's retired now and he's loving it too. He's very happily retired. Um, yeah. And he had a lot of, a lot of really uh, complimentary things to say about yeah, you. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Amazing how when you shared that kind of ring time and that kind of battle that you emerged from it with this kind of bond. Um, really yeah. common thing in boxing. Leon, great to see you. No, great Thanks to very much for honest. your time. Uh, that's it for today. The podcast will be coming from right here, the Peacock Gym in Canning Town. So uh, give that a listen later on and we'll catch you again next time. Sky Sports. Feel it all.